everybody. My name is Ann Kushnick. I'm an instructor here at James City County Parks and Recreation. I've been an instructor here for almost 25 years. I teach oil painting, I teach pastels, and acrylics. Today we'll be demonstrating an acrylic painting. It's a seascape. Um, we've already done a little bit of it to get started, um, but before we get started, I want to explain what you'll need to do this painting. The surface we're using um, to paint this painting is canvas paper. This is a canvas uh, paper. You can get them in pads. It's an inexpensive alternative if you're just learning. Uh, there's canvas boards as well. Um, they're also inexpensive. You can get them in three or four packs. Um, also a, a very cheaper alternative to uh, stretch canvas. Uh, stretch canvas, um, they're stretched on stretchers. Uh, this is a painting I had done in oils. It's kind of my preferred method is the stretch canvas for something I'm going to want to uh, exhibit, sell, uh, hang on my wall, okay? You can also get the thicker canvas, stretch canvas. Uh, they're good, you can paint the sides of it and you don't have to pay for a frame. So those are the uh, three alternatives for surfaces that we can use in acrylics and in oils. We do have our brushes, the different types of brushes we have. We have a flat filbert, uh, which the majority of the painting will be done with. Uh, we have a fan brush, which is a bristle fan brush, not a, um, not a soft one, okay? And one of the other brushes will have some flats and what's called a rake or a comb, uh, not to be confused with the fan. People tend to confuse that. And that will be doing the, um, the leaves and, and the brushes, and we do have also a liner brush that we'll be using at the, at the back end of it. Um, I do have some of my colors mixed up. The colors we'll be using today is cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, of course, titanium white, um, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, sap green, alizarin crimson, cad red light, and burnt sienna. There'll be a list accompanying this so you, you can look at it online. Um, the palette I'm using is called a wet palette. Um, what it is is there's a sponge underneath. You wet the sponge. You can put a little vinegar in it that keeps it from getting moldy. And then you put your paper on it. This is regular paper, not to be confused with the oil um, paper that you use. It gets the paper wet and it keeps your paints wet throughout the process. Eventually you have a cover for this thing. Um, you can cover it and believe it or not, your acrylics will be still wet the next day. So um, the other thing you'll need is a palette knife to mix your paints. Now I've already mixed some of the paints. I've mixed some cerulean and ultramarine and some white. And that's how I got my sky color. A little more cerulean and ultramarine for the water. And then I mix some white with the yellow ochre and a little blue for here. And then just some plain old burnt umber for underneath where the, um, the grasses will be. So um, with that said, let's get started and I'll go to step two of our painting. So I'm still gonna work with, we always work with the um, large brush and work down to your smaller. So I'm going back to the, the larger brush and I'm gonna mix some of the, um, the white with a little alizarin crimson to get a little bit of a pink color in my sky. And I'm gonna add that here. And don't worry if you get some, some of it onto the, um, onto the water. What you can always do is right away just take some wet, um, a wet brush and clear that off. Okay, so now I'm gonna, the other tip is when you're not using your brush in acrylics, you put it in water. If you take your brush and put it to the side with paint on it, you're gonna lose your brush. You might as well just throw it out. Um, I'm gonna take some white with a little of the blue. Now this is a mixture, this is actually straight cerulean blue with white. And I'm gonna lighten the sky down here and up here a little bit. Now 
Now I'm going to clean that off. And I wipe it because I don't want, you don't want a lot of water in acrylics. Uh, this is not watercolor. It is a water-based paint, but it is not watercolor. So don't use so much water in your painting. So I'm just taking a little of the yellow with some white. And that's another thing be careful with when you're adding yellow to a blue sky, you don't want a green sky. So I'm adding a little of that over in this area. And you let some of the, the little bit of the light kind of make some clouds for you there. And I think that should be enough on the sky. I might add a little more lighter blue right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to the water. I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna use some of the, the cerulean blue and very thinly I'm gonna come through and just add little streaks And then I'm going to get some lighter and do the same thing so it looks like water. Now I'm going to switch to my rake brush, mainly because I'm coming down into the, the the foam area and I want smaller smaller strokes so I'm kind of using a light blue even though this looks like white it's actually a pale blue when you're working on a white palette everything looks dark so generally the rule of thumb is you want to have a, a neutral palette but that's not always possible so I'm kind of making some foam Now I'm going to take some of the blue mixing it with a little white so everything doesn't look so white. So I'm interspersing that in here. And then taking some more cerulean up in here to lighten this up. Okay. Then back with the lighter down at the bottom here. of the pale blue to add some more foam. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave the water for now. I may go back to it, I may not. Um, one of the things you need to do when you're painting is sometimes step back and not just keep working one area. Um, you can overwork an area very easily. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Um, I'm going to come in and do a little on the, um, the sand here, get some different colors in here. I have some pale blue again, and I'm gonna bring the, actually some of the pale blue over here. And I'm still using the rake brush. Now over in this area, I'm using more of the, old, uh, the yellow ochre with some white. And 
and I'm not filling in flat. I'm, I'm kind of leaving some streaks there so it doesn't, I'm not going in a, a, a one smooth coat. I'm just breaking it up so it looks like sand. Okay, maybe a little more of the blue. Actually, let me wash the brush. A little more of the pale blue closer to the water to make it look like the water is actually coming up onto the, onto the beach. Okay, I'm gonna leave that now. Now I'm gonna go to the grasses. And the color I'm gonna use for the grasses is um, sap green. Now the sap greens you buy in the store, you gotta be careful. Um, they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, so don't buy a cheap one. So I'm using sap green and I'm gonna put a little bit of alizarin crimson in with the sap green to make it darker. If you add complements, red and green, uh, you basically get black, um, but I'm just making a dark green and I'm going to just block in some grasses here. So this, this is a, a bush coming to the shore. I'm not making it as tall as that one. Now what I'm going to do with the with the still using the rake brush, I'm going to start adding some grasses. This is where you need a little extra water to get it to flow. A lot more extra water. Now I start with adding the dark when I'm doing the leaves, also the back of the, the green. I start dark and go to light. Um, that's generally the progression in oils and acrylics. Um, you start to the dark and then move on to the light. I'm going to add some burnt umber to the base of this. Same with here. And just get a little water on, on the brush, not, not to the point where it's dripping. Now we're gonna stop for a few minutes and let this dry. Um, even though it is acrylic, and acrylic dries faster than oils, you still need time to let the paint dry. So right now we're gonna stop for a uh, couple minutes and take a little short break and let the paint dry. All right, now we've let it dry for a little bit. 
actually got it, walked around, and looked at it from different angles. Um, that's very important when you're painting. Um, sometimes you're so close to this thing, you can't see the forest for the trees, okay? So now that we've let it dry for a little bit, um, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do a little touch up on the water right now. So I'm taking some pale blue again, and I'm going to um, add a little more foam at the edge of the at the edge of the shore here. Not too much. You don't want to go the whole way in like a straight line. You want to kind of break it up a little bit um, in different areas. You know, um, I had one teacher said it's called marching soldiers. You don't want to look like you've it's it's all so uniform. Okay. Um, I'm also going to bring a little more of the cerulean little light cerulean up in here to kind of break up the color a little bit so it's not so monochromatic. Okay, so that's probably, and then maybe another little bit of blue under this wave to give it some depth. Okay, so I think the water is done. I'm gonna go back onto the, the grasses here and I'm kind of gonna blend this part. So I'm gonna take some of the white, it may have a little blue in it, with a little of the um, yellow ochre, probably more white. And I'm gonna take a little of the burnt umber with it. What the burnt umber will do is, because I've added there's some blue in this, the burnt umber will, if you add burnt umber and ultramarine blue together, you get black. So you can make a gray versus a green. So I'm gonna kinda come under here Blend the line a bit. Now I'm gonna, I am gonna get some ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That makes a gray or black. Put a little white with it. Now I've got me a gray. So I'm gonna put some gray under here. So it's like some shadows and some shadows under here. under here as well. Grab some of the white to make a lighter gray so it blends in a little. So I'm not overly blending, I'm leaving some of the strokes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go back up to the bush area up here, and I'm going to use the fan brush. Now the fan brush, this has to be a stiff one, like I said, not a, not a sable, um, more of a bristle. There's a big difference when you use a sable fan versus a bristle fan. Um, the sable tends to collapse and you don't get that nice little um, that look you're, I'm looking for here. So I'm gonna mix a little of my sap green with some of the yellow, cad yellow light. I'm also gonna mix some of it with my yellow ochre. So I'll have two types of yellow greens. And once again, when you're not using the knife, it goes in the water. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be very hard to clean. So I'm gonna take the fan brush and I'm just gonna use the edge, not the whole thing, just one edge of it. Otherwise, if you do it around the front, you get little fans on there and it just doesn't look right. So I'm gonna just dab. And it gets that look of a bush. And I'm leaving the dark at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do at the bottom is I'm gonna take the dark green on the other side, and I'm gonna just hit, fill that in a little bit. And now I'm gonna go back to what I call my light side and just 
dip in some of the cad yellow light. It's got some green on it. And I'm just gonna do some highlights on the top. Okay, and I'm just gonna stop there with that. You can also use the fan to make your grasses if you'd like. Um, I'll show you the couple of different ways to do it. I showed you with the, the, um, the rake brush. Now I'm gonna show you with the, um, the fan. So if I take the fan and I just go up like that, you can get some more thicker. You have to have some more water on that. Okay. Not my preferred method to do it, but that is one way you can do grasses. You can do them like, if you had like regular grass you're putting in, you can just dab it like that. So I'm gonna go back to, um, actually I'm gonna use a liner brush. A liner brush is very thin and long, okay? Um, it's not a, this is a round, that's the difference. Round is not very long. You see the, the hairs on this one is a lot longer. So you want the liner brush. These are good for, they have their uses, but this is a better brush. So I'm gonna take this into the um, lighter colors, the yellow, and I'm gonna mix a lot of water with it. Uh, you want it to the consistency of India ink. So it flows. And then I roll the brush to a point. And then I'm just going to, from the bottom up, make little, it's hard to see. Let me go over here. And it's also not enough water, so. So I'm gonna just, do my grasses. Let me get up. And you got to keep dipping into the paint. And we can break it back that way. Get the different, go in the different directions. One of the things all my students always hear me saying is more paint. Because they, you load the brush and then you think you can do like a whole bunch with the one loaded brush. You got to keep loading your brush with paint. And I'm going to go all the way up. And I don't even have enough paint, so. I'm gonna come up through here and go right up. And if you make a mistake and something doesn't come out really the way you want it, just wait for it to dry, paint over it, and go over it again. Oil is, uh, acrylics are very forgiving, so is oils. Um, now I'm gonna take some of the burnt sienna. I'm gonna mix it with a little of the yellow ochre to get some of the, um, the sienna colors in the, the leaves. You see a lot of times if it's if it looks very thin, it's because I didn't use enough water. Okay, so I'm gonna more paint. Now 
and more water. And go in different directions when you're doing the, the leaves. Don't just do the marching soldier bit. Now I'm going to add a little more of the just plain cad yellow light. Well, it has a little green in it, but I'm going to get that nice and wet. some more yellows over in here. I'm trying to keep the yellow here on the tops. Usually when you have grasses, it's usually dark at the bottom, lighter at the top, because that's where the sun's hitting. The other thing you might want to do when you're painting is squint. Or if you wear glasses, don't wear them. I'm going to stop. One of the things you've got to do when you're painting a lot is stop, step back, look at the painting, see if it needs anything else. You need to look at it at a distance. You don't want to look, you know, because when you're too, when you're like this close, um, that's why a lot of artists you see they paint like this. I have a friend who has a long brush like that big, um, and that keeps you from being right on, on top of it. So right now I want to stop, um, let it dry, and I may come back to it and add more details um, and look at it again and say, yeah, it needs a little here, a little there, or I might just say, this is fine, uh, and sign it. So um, there's a famous artist once said, it takes two people to paint the painting, the artist, and someone to shoot him before he screws it up. So you want to stop before you do screw it up. So we're going to stop right now and uh, I think it's fairly done. So um, anyway, it's been fun painting with y'all. This has been uh, a real treat. Um, one of the things when you're done with your painting is you wanna clean your brushes. So um, it's very important 
to clean your brushes if you spent a lot of money on them, or even $15. I have a rake I spent $15 on. I don't want to ruin it. So you just clean them off in water and then take a little soap. You can use artist soap. You can use hand, household soap. Soap it up. Use lukewarm water. Do not use hot water. If you use hot water, eventually it's going to um, dissolve the glue that's in the ferrule the brush and you're going to find uh, your brush coming apart. That's 25 years of teaching. I've seen that happen. So, um, and then you, you clean them up real good with soap and water, and then you can leave a little soap on them, uh, put a little soap to shape them, and then leave it, and it should be fine. Anyway, it's been a joy painting with you all today. Thank you.